Welcome back to part 3 of the series of exploring the best Berlin districts to live in. I hope you didn't decide where you buy your flat yet, because we still have to cover some of the most awesome districts here. In part 1 we covered everything inside the Ringbahn in the center of Berlin, in part 2 the Eastern Bloc and now it's time for the West. We will be starting our journey at the very edge of Berlin, in one of Berlin's wealthiest neighborhoods, Wannsee. And now to you Mr. Magic Bean. How is the situation down there in Wannsee? Tell us more! Wannsee is lovely, as you can see. If you didn't know, it's named after this beautiful lake behind me. Sea means lake in German. It is one of the greenest districts in all of Berlin, with lots and lots of water. You can find forests for long walks, great lakeside access for swimming or taking your boat out. Maybe that's why it's also home to the second oldest yacht club in the whole of Germany, Verein Segelhaus am Wannsee. But it's also a very popular destination for day trippers, who are mostly heading to the Fauninsel, an English-style country park of the Prussian royal family. And to the south, there are a lot of historical buildings around Schloss Klinika with beautiful surrounding gardens. It's also a great district if you want to be close to the beautiful city of Potsdam, which is just across the Glinica Bridge. Moving a bit closer to the centre, you can find some of the city's richest neighbourhoods. Zehlendorf and Dahlem have the highest number of millionaires living in Berlin. The residential areas here are characterised by massive family estates. In Zehlendorf they usually look a bit more historic, whereas in Dahlem they are more modern. But there are also affordable corners to find. The area used to be a major hub for the military presence of the Allies after the war, and many of the old barracks have been converted into normal living spaces, which are very popular among the many students of the Freie Universität Berlin, one of Berlin's biggest universities that is located here. We asked some local residents to tell us more. It's a bit ruhiger, but trotzdem can man viel machen for ja. me. Here gibt's einfach viele Orte, die man sich angucken kann. Und man hat hier eigentlich alles. Ja. Mhm. Ja, Egal ob Kaffee, Essen, ja. Parks, Ruhe, ja. Seen. Ja. Du hast wirklich schöne Sachen hier. Ja, früher waren wir, glaube ich, alle, die ja, hier. Immer in, im Sommer. Ich glaube, jeder, der im Zehlendorf wohnt, geht immer an den Schlachtensee ja. oder Krummelanke. Ja, Krummelanke. Oder dann halt Wannsee. Es ist hier wahrscheinlich nur so ein bisschen anders als in anderen Bezirken, dass hier schon mehr ältere Leute halt auch ja. sind. Ja. Aber auch viele junge Leute. Gerade durch die Schulen hier, ne? Durch die Schulen. Hier gibt es super viele Schulen. Ähm, und super viele Familien, die hier extra wohnen, weil ja. es halt so ein bisschen ruhiger ist. Von daher ist hier eigentlich alles gemischt. Aber ich würde sagen, hier wohnen eher so die normaleren Menschen. Also es ist jetzt nicht so wie in Neukölln oder so, wo man doch... So mehr hippe Leute. Ja, genau. Wo hier sind, sind die Leute alle ein bisschen... Entspannter. Also die FU ist relativ nah. Wenn ich Leute kennengelernt habe von dort, ähm, die haben hier alle ihre WGs und äh, wohnen dann hier auch. Aber ich glaube auch vor allem für junge Familien. Ich glaube, unsere Eltern wären niemals mit uns irgendwie nach Kreuzberg oder so gezogen. Nee. Ich glaube, das hätten sie niemals gemacht. Ist ein schöner Bezug. Ja, <lacht> Moving on to Grunewald, the district with the biggest patch of forest in West Berlin. Grunewald has only a small residential area with mostly large family houses that have often stayed in the families for generations. So it can be difficult to find places to live here. But if you can, it is certainly worth it because you will be surrounded by 3000 hectares of forest with several lakes to choose from, which is perfect if you have a dog. They even have their own beach here. Next to the Grunewaldsee is also the Jagdschloss Grunewald, a hunting lodge, which is Berlin's oldest preserved castle. And we cannot forget the infamous Teufelsberg in the middle of the forest, home to an old US spy station. Over the years, it has become a popular hiking destination. People love just strolling around here and taking pictures with the art that has been created there over the years. Grunewald is the perfect getaway from the busy city, but still close enough to Kudam and generally well connected, in case you do need to go shopping or have a drink. A stone's throw away to the southeast is Steglitz. Steglitz represents both picturesque bourgeois town and big city flair in equal measure. The heart of the district is the famous Schlossstraße, a bustling high street that runs down the middle and is one of the best places to go shopping in the whole of Berlin. The Das Schloss shopping mall, for example, is definitely the fanciest mall in the city, with old clocks, marble floors, chandeliers and even a fountain. 
In the area is also the Botanical Garden, one of the largest and most diverse in the entire world. During Christmas, the garden even transforms into a winter wonderland. You can also find the Schlosspark Theatre, an early 1900s theatre staging concerts, plays, readings and other performing arts events. Before we move on to the next district, let me tell you about our partner who made this video possible, NordVPN. When you're moving into a new place, there's certain things you want to have as a standard utility, right? You want running water, heating, electricity, internet. But what is also almost as important as these other things? A VPN client. There is almost no other way to stay safe and private while browsing the World Wide Web. Internet without a VPN is like a house with no windows. Anyone can look inside and if they see something they like, they can just come in and take it. Cybercrime and tracking is getting bigger and bigger every year. There's loads of shady websites just waiting for you to make the wrong click. But if you use NordVPN with its integrated threat protection, you don't have to worry about falling victim to things like malvertising, phishing or password attacks. With just one click, you can browse the web being safe. NordVPN is the fastest VPN client on the planet. They don't compromise on speed, they don't track or share what you do online, and you can even turn on a kill switch to make sure your data is never exposed. So if you care about your privacy, go to nordvpn.com forward slash radical living and get the exclusive deal that is on right now. They even have a 30 day money back guarantee, so it's completely risk free. Just try it out. And now to the next district. Right next to Steglitz, we find Mariendorf, which feels much less busy and built up in comparison. It is not quite into the small village feel, but instead somewhere in the middle, more like a suburb. Most of the district consists of single standing houses, low rise apartment complexes, parks, and an unusually high amount of cemeteries. But the most prominent part is the 100 year old horse racing track to the south, which still hosts 100 harness races each year. A bit further east is Britz, which has a similar suburb feeling to Mariendorf, but with a few interesting additional features. I'd even dare to say it is one of Berlin's most underrated districts. The wonderful Britzer Garten is located here, a massive landscape park constructed for the Bundesgartenschau in 1985 in order to provide a new landscape park to the citizens in the southeast of West Berlin, who were at that time cut off from the surrounding countryside. Here you can find beautiful multicolor flower patches, different lakes and plenty of playgrounds. Another gem in the area is the Schloss Britz, a former manor house of the historical Rittergut Britz, used today for exhibitions and concerts. One of Berlin's best Christmas markets also takes place here. Another unique place to be found here is the Hufeisen Siedlung, a well-designed residential housing estate built in the late 1920s. The core of the settlement consists of residential blocks arranged in a horseshoe shape. With its distinctive architecture, it was one of the first social housing projects and is considered an icon of modern urban development and new building styles. The southern part of Brits stands in contrast to the rest of the district. As you head north, the streets start to feel more like neighboring Neukölln with diverse cultures and graffiti. More to the east, we find the district of Johannisthal, which feels like a quiet little village more than a suburb of Berlin. But since it's just next to the up and coming Niederschöneweide, the action is just around the corner. Johannisthal is a place with a rich history. It was formerly home to Germany's first commercial airfield, opening in 1909. For the last decades, it has been abandoned and became a popular spot for abandoned building explorers. Part of the old airfield is still there, but it is slowly being redeveloped. One part into a wide and open landscape park and another part into apartment buildings. By 2025, over 1,800 new apartments will be ready to move in here. This could be your chance to finally find a flat in Berlin. Johannesthal is a particularly great place to live if you are a frequent traveler, since you need just 20 minutes to get to the Berlin airport. Jumping up to the northwest lies one of Berlin's most controversial districts, Wedding. For the longest time, people have called Wedding the secret underdog, 
the new hip district to be. It's been 20 years and it's still trying. At this point, it's become a running gag among many Berliners. Which district do you live in? I live in Wedding. Wedding? Yeah. You, you live in Wedding? Yeah, why? Okay, bye. Oh. Wedding has a bustling heart with lots of cool bars and cafes, though it's still less busy than Friedrichshain or Kreuzberg. It's a pretty popular district for students since it's still quite affordable and well connected. The Plutzensee is also nice to have for any summer afternoon. We asked the local resident to tell us more about what kind of people live here. I think it's a mix, kind of everybody, you find everything, you find young people, artists, you know, you find uh, your average 40 year old German as well as your African mom, as well as your Turkish guy, uh, as well as people like me, I guess. That's what I like about it. I have dogs, I like the close proximity of, you know, nature or nature in Berlin and how far that goes. But, uh, you know, I have something like water and I can go to the Rehberge and then it takes me 10 minutes to be uh, downtown. Next up, we have West End. West End is split three ways. You have the residential area on the east side, the Olympia Park and Stadium to the west, and to the south, you can find the Messegelände. Messe means trade fair in German. So this large collection of buildings and warehouses is home to the corporate and business exhibitions that are hosted in Berlin. If your work involves trade fairs, this could be a great option for you. The Olympia Stadium and Park is home to large sporting activities, attracting huge crowds on a regular basis. Plus, here you can find the Waldbühne, a famous venue that hosts outdoor concerts and events. Westend is a transport hub and is very well connected. You have Westkreuz Station, the Berlin Central bus station with different buses and regional coaches leaving from here, and it's the meeting point of three major highways going in all directions. Westend seems to have a little bit of everything. Moving on to Tegel. Most people connect Tegel with the recently closed Tegeler Airport, and it does make up a big part of the district. The good news is that the city is transforming the whole area. The plan is to build a massive research and industrial park called Urban Tech Republic that will host more than a thousand companies and startups. Additionally, 5,000 apartments are in development to give a new home to more than 10,000 citizens. But Tegel has more to offer than just the airport area. We asked a local resident to tell us what's special about this district? Oh, a lot. It's completely different if you compare it to Prenzlauer Berg or something like this. It's completely different. It does not really feel like Berlin. It's a little bit like a little place outside of Berlin, but you can move quickly into Berlin. Tegel is a little bit older, <laughs> I would say, definitely, but it's beautiful. It's, you just have this awesome sea, which I just look on. Uh, that's really just awesome. It's like 200 meters from our flat and you're just in yeah, and an awesome paradise, for, for, at least for me. I love the water and the nature here is just, just awesome. It really just mm. makes fun to live here, yeah. And even if you're a little bit more shy and just want to know the city, start here, it's awesome. You can then go into the next step of Berlin. That's definitely a way uh, to do it. In the far west lies our last district. Spandau, the district that even predates Berlin. Most people don't view Spandau as part of Berlin, but rather as its own little town next to Berlin. Spandau itself has many districts, but the most interesting ones are Old Spandau, Siemensstadt and Wilhelmstadt. Right now, I'm in the old city of Spandau, which, as you can see, has a traditional German flair. The special thing about Spandau in general is that it's completely surrounded by water, giving it a pretty serene vibe. There's lots of shops and cafes and plenty of space to walk with no cars. At every turn, you encounter historic buildings from times long past. While the charming old-fashioned street lamps and signs effortlessly transport you to an earlier era of Germany. It's as if time itself stands still here. One of Berlin's oldest structures can also be found here, the Citadel, being one of the most well-preserved Renaissance military structures in the whole of Europe. Spandau has something for everybody. In the sub-district of Wilhelmstadt, you can find beautiful forest areas, 
yacht sailing clubs, and even a second little Venice. If you love to be around water and nature, it doesn't get much better than this. Much in contrast to Wilhelmstadt is Siemensstadt, one of the oldest industrial locations in Germany, being closely linked to the history of one of Germany's biggest companies, Siemens. Siemens was founded here in 1847, and once they got bigger, they acquired the barely developed area between Charlottenburg and Schwandau. In just under two decades, residential areas and social institutions were created for workers, in addition to numerous industrial and factory buildings. Today, a new forward-looking district, Siemensstadt Square, is being created, a modern smart campus that combines work, production and research. That's it from me. Back to you, Radical Living. All right, that were the most special districts in West Berlin. I hope this video series gave you a little overview over Berlin. And if you want to know more about life in Berlin, just have a look at my other videos. I made like 60 videos dedicated to Berlin. I think I covered almost every aspect of living here. And thanks, Mr. Magic Bean, to jump in for me in this video while I'm driving around Sri Lanka in a rickshaw. But more about that in a different video. See ya.